I'm Dana Nye, president of Ben Nye Makeup. It's my pleasure to introduce to you a talented makeup artist and a very good friend, Darren Jinx. He's wig master for the LA Opera, and today he'll be demonstrating what we're calling how the West was distressed. I'm so glad you're with us today. I'm glad to be here. So let's begin. So uh, for our cowboy, to begin with, uh, there's this wonderful product that was developed ages ago by Dana's father called uh, Bronzing Body Tint. It was developed for actually Yul Brenner for the stage show of King and I. Uh, and it's a wonderful stain. It gives a great uh, underbase, especially for uh, the stuff that we're going to put on top of it. <clears throat> it will kind of mix with it and start to run and end up looking more like grime. You apply it with a wet sponge, just a wet sea sponge, to the face. And since we're making him dirty, I'm not interested in a perfect application with this. When you're doing these applications, you should always think of what your end result is. There's no point in putting a foundation on him if we're making him dirty. You don't want to do a cream foundation. That would make point, you know, be pointless. So you can do this very quickly just to tan him up so that he looks like he's been out on the range. It will even kind of take over the prosthetics, boom, you know, pulls them in. It's really nice. So does it, does it dry very quickly? It does dry very quickly, but you can also reactivate it with a little damp sponge and move it around again. So, it, This has alcohol, um, water, uh, glycerin, food coloring. Notice I'm going around to the back of his neck. If he's a cowboy, he's, we're also going to do sunburn on him. He's going to be sunburned back here. So. Nothing worse than having someone turn around on film or stage and, you know, that's missed. So any exposed skin you should really pay attention to. The other thing is you can't forget the hands. So any exposed skin, go ahead and make it up. The hand test uh, is like this so that your hands match the face more or less. And the other nice thing with, with this, if you are doing it for beauty, tanning, uh, you would probably want to go back and clean off the nails, but it, it will settle into the nail beds a little bit. That's great. Extra grime. So that would be the first layer, and then we can move on to sunburning him. Um, I'm going to be painting out of the wonderful Ultimate FX palette. Uh, these colors were reformulated a few years ago. Uh, about two years ago. Yeah, and the wonderful thing about them is they're dissolvable with alcohol, so you can turn them into a stain. And I'm going to use the colors capillary and dark sunburn, surprisingly enough. The capillary uh, stipple was one of four colors that Dick Smith sent to me after finishing Amadeus. Liver spot, freckle stipple, age spot, and the capillary. He had hand mixed, hand made these colors, and then he sent them to me and said, when you have a chance, make them. So we did. But I don't know if you can see on the white, nice white palette how well they thin down with a bit of alcohol. And then for sunburn, again, this is just, you know, it's quick. It shouldn't be solid. It should be a little broken up, especially for our cowboy. He's been in the sun a lot. There's a lot of sun damage. There's going to be underlaying. So it doesn't need to be this perfect application. And it should be where the, the sun naturally hits across the bridge of the nose, a little on the chin. And it's just dabbing at it. And I'm starting with the dark sunburn just to lay down a base. And I'm purposely avoiding the area of the eye, leaving it more white, because that really helps it register as sunburn. You know even though he's probably not wearing sunglasses or anything. But. And again, this is just a lot of layering of colors, one after the other. After we do this, we'll be moving on to dirt. But these are the flesh tones. So you start with your flesh tones, and then you move on to adding the, uh, the grime on top. Notice tops of ears, areas that would get sunburned. And then the big one, of course, is to get the neck. Because as we all know, you go out in the sun, that's often the place that you're getting that sunburn. Are you still using the uh, dark sunburn or do yep. you, just, you switch? Yep, I'm still using the dark sunburn just to lay in that initial layer. And I do love these palettes. They have such a wonderful staining quality. 
But even after they're set, the nice thing about them, since they're still creams, you can move them around a little bit. You know, it's not like the alcohol pellets. When they're dry, they're dry. That's it. You're done. Oh, we're going to go back to the front, and I'm just going to add a little bit of the capillary to it, which is a much richer red, not quite as bronzy. And I'm just going to kind of hit that on, and it's going to have the effect of kind of picking up some of the color that's underneath and moving it around and kind of mixing with it. And you can also see how well this makeup works over top of the prosthetics, too. I mean, it's great over prosate prosthetics. And, you know, this is all art. There's no science to it. Depends on what right, looks right to your eye. Go on your iPad, search for sunburns. I did before I did this makeup, tons of them. Looked at peeling noses, you know, what a fresh sunburn looks like, what an aging sunburn looks like. So that just adds a little extra breakup to the skin. Maybe a little more on the ears. You might also want to think about character things depending on what it is. One side of his face may be a little bit more burned than the other because you know how the sun goes. I like to throw those little things in that make people go, hmm, what's that? As long as it doesn't look wrong. And at this point, I actually like to go ahead and take a little bit of the final seal before I do the dirt and mist it over to kind of lock this in. So it's a wonderful sealer that Dana's had for a very long time, Final Seal, minty fresh. Everyone loves it. This is the alcohol-based uh, sealer. And if you're going to use a lot of this, I suggest having a fan for the, the actor or the artist you're working on so that they can blow it away. The fun thing about dirt, especially with the Ben Nye products, is he makes dry products, charcoal and plains dust, and uh, it was discovered, I don't know, who, what was the makeup artist that told you about the formulation? You can take these, put them out on paper, like sprinkle them out on paper until you've got a good mass of them. And then, is it that one? No, it's this one. Dump it in a little shaker bottle with a ball in it, and then dump some Liquiset in it. And it makes a wash, a dirt wash, that is really, really sturdy and will last all day and stand up. It's great. This one ends up being, when you put it on, you'll notice it goes a bit gritty, which is nice. Because of the powders in it, they don't completely dissolve, so it adds this kind of texture to it. For an overall uh, first pass, I also like using the magic color, black and brown. Uh, mostly brown, touch of black, same thing, add liquid color, uh, liquid set to it. Turn it into a uh, more stable liquid color and thin it so it's a wash. And you can start with that with a damp sea sponge and kind of get your first browns down, and then you can go down with the other one for a more gritty look on top. And with dirt, you just kind of want to dab it on wet, and it, I usually like to keep it kind of concentrated to the back of the face and leave the front of the face open. I mean, the worst thing, unless you're doing comedy, is to go and put a dirt mark in the front of the nose. You know, it just doesn't look right. So again, the sea sponge, the natural sponge, and since you're building on it, you can use the same sponge that you use the bronzing tin in, no problem. All right, damp, less use of product, or uh, less tools to clean at the end of the night. The main thing is to wash it really good when you're done. Let it air dry. So you come back to it and it's clean. Because it's in this kind of washy liquid form, it starts to settle into the lines that are on his face. So the whole, his whole uh, approach here is stippling, uneven texture. It's consistently uneven, which is great. Gives him, uh, he's not gonna be perfect when, he, when he's done. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the fun thing about these makeups is nothing's, as long as it looks realistic, nothing's wrong. Someone that has more texture in their skin, you can have them kind of squint their eye and then you can pat over it and you get uh, the white lines that look like dust, which is a really nice effect. So squinting does a whole lot for you. Yeah, it's also good for age. You hit it with a highlight and you have automatically know where you put your shading. So then I would just move right on to the second grime, which is I've mixed up a little bit darker. And that's out of the dry powders, the uh, plains dirt and a little bit of the charcoal. And this will just give me something that's a bit grittier because you'll actually get the bits of grit from the powder 
If he's been out, his hands are going to be dirty. Usually, I'd, I'd really like to get like elbows, leaning on stuff, tends to pick up dirt, side of hands because people are always you know, putting them on a surface. So the body makeup is critical for this? To tie it all in together because it doesn't make sense otherwise. And because it's got all that liquid set in it, it's self-setting. So, you know, now it's really sitting there and it's going to be just stay and not rub off so much. Um, you can now, so if you need to move it around, you can dip your finger in a little liquid set and just kind of tap it and push it into place. Uh, if he had, again, more wrinkles on his face, you know, it would, if you applied it enough as a wash, it would settle within those lines and then you could wipe it off. But he just, youthful skin, so. <laughs> so the next thing I think our cowboy needs is a little beard stipple. Um, different people have different ways of doing this. I actually like to start with a, to, uh, by laying down a little powder to put a little underbase in so there's that kind of bluish tone to the skin. So I'm using uh, Ben Nice Cobblestone and their uh, Smoky Taupe are two of my favorite co uh, colors. They have just enough blue in them to read really well. And usually I'd, I'd kind of use this almost as a contour, so you don't need to pull it all the way up, but you can see if you turn to the side that I can strengthen his jaw with it a little bit. We do have facial hair pieces, so I'm not going to worry about the upper lip because we're going to be sticking something up there with spare gum. Really, you don't want product on to get the best adhesion. And a little bit of this powder goes a long way. You don't want to put so much on that you end up going into hobo world. So that's about all I do for powder, just as an underbase. So I'm taking black from this palette and adding just a little bit of blue, which uh, particular blue that I took from was sapphire blue. Just lovely color. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of green to it to make a uh, beard shadow that I can kind of flick on with a brush. I usually like to thin it down, do the flicking first, and then follow it with a stipple sponge to add some better points of hair into it. And you don't want to thin it too much because you'll end up with a wash that it's just a wash. It will be kind of a solid thing. You still want to see the pointillism but it does have to be thinned enough to actually flick. <laughs> now you could break the material down and apply it with a fine stipple sponge as well. Yeah. When you flick the brush, it's going to go on as a little teeny splatter. So it's a great effect. And this is a dye brush that you get from the, uh, the uh, shoe repair shop, so it's got lots of bristle to it. So he keeps mixing his color, thinning his color uh, into the palette of, of the uh, ulti Ultimate Effects Kit. You can also blend these colors uh, into the skin uh, w with alcohol on your brush. So you could, you could apply the colors direct if it was a bruise, say and then blend it into the skin. If you just do this, there isn't depth. It doesn't have the, since there isn't a physical three-dimensional thing there, uh, you have to add just these little pinpoints of highlight so it actually looks like the hair is sticking out and has an end that's catching that. And then you can go in, I like to make a little uh, highlight color out of goldenrod and a little white, because pure white's gonna make it look like gray but the yellow is going to have enough that it's going to almost give it like a little blonding effect. And this is just the lightest little pass just to add those little pinpoints in of highlight to fool the eye. Too much and you will make it go gray, which obviously you don't want unless it is supposed to be a gray beard. So now we're moving on to the uh, cuts and bruises. Uh, Dana makes wonderful colors like black and blue. Um, he's made it very easy for us. Dried blood, bruise, all contained within this lovely kit that you can just paint directly from. Uh, black and blue is a very dark. Some, some purple with black. Yep. And then there's uh, a bruise tone, which is actually kind of this angry purpley red. And then we also have uh, the uh, dried blood, 
and fresh cut, which I think will be handy. All of these colors were reformulated about two and a half years ago. So they're, they're, uh, the intensity of the color is significantly greater than our original formulas. So we've got the black and blue, uh, the dried blood, the fresh blood, we've sallow green, uh, the golden yellow, is that right? Yeah. Golden rod, sorry. And then the, uh, what's the other one? Bruise. So I'm going to start by just taking a little bit of this brownish dried blood color, and I'm just going to bring some of his lip color back into the prosthetic here. And then I'm going to start stippling, and so that I can go through and just use one brush, I'm going to start with my reds, the fresh blood. I'm going to get it into the cut. So I'm kind of just hitting all of the cut areas with it first. Uh, and then I'm going to go on to the actual bruise color and start to stipple that in. And when you're doing this, you want to consciously leave some highlight area. You don't want to make the whole thing covered because it's just going to turn to mud. It won't look like anything. And I find that it's also best to kind of build it slowly. You can always add more. At this point, it's really hard to take stuff off. So you can build as you go, and you can keep looking to see what it's, if you have enough intensity. And something else to consider, if there's a cut in the bruise, it's probably not going to be as dark and pooling because the blood's actually had somewhere to escape from the skin, so you don't necessarily need to go as heavy with it. So he's forever stippling. Even though he does, he's not using a stipple sponge, but you could be stippling with your finger or a brush or another type of sponge. And there is a little piece over his eye, and the eye is somewhere that the blood often pulls. Uh, so I'll pa be painting this really dark just to kind of bring that down. There, let's go in with some of the black and blue now. And I kind of want to get that pooled effect that happens right in the corner of the eye. Now he's actually using a color that's called black and blue. And how far you take all this stuff is up to you, depending on how much gore you really want out of it. So I'm going back in with a little bit of the dried blood just to punch in a little bit of a brownie red. So have you used any goldenrod yet? or did Not you, yet. Is, I'll be is, doing that next. These are just voids that are now picking up as a high point. Um, on, on the, uh, the, the, the torn skin on the cheek and on the frontal bone. Uh -huh. These are all, all been thinned with, uh, with the alcohol. So I know that close. many of you are using the, um, the alcohol-based color, and this is a, a really a, a nice alternative cream thinned with the 99%. Once it, once it blends into the skin, it's very durable. Whereas the, whereas the, the resin-based color that we, we all rely on, it, um, it dries. And once it's set, that's it. Whereas this, this has some flexibility to it that allows you to make adjustments, but yet really doesn't need very much powder, right? Look up, Darren? No, it doesn't. It, you can avoid powdering it, especially with the... Uh using the alcohol we just set up. You can if you like, and then hit it with the uh, final seal just to bring it back. So I think now we'll move on to the yellows just to add a little bit of touch of that, and maybe just a little bit over the top of the cut. So that's about all I'm gonna do with that. Um, we can just take his hand and very easily with the stipple sponge add some scrapes to the hand. 
and it's very, very effective. And then you can go back in and grab a little bit of the thick blood or the fresh scab, depending, and give it a little bit of dimension just by scraping over it, adding a little bit to the cuts so that they just look a little fresher. It also gives them the sheen. It's going to stay put, not move as much. Uh, after taking on the special effects for the, the feature, The Deer Hunter, uh, Dick sent me these two colors and said, gee, I, I, I made my thick bloods myself, and um, you can too. And uh, they're uh, a material that, that comes in handy. It's um, do all kinds of things with thick blood and I'm fresh scalp. do your teeth really quickly. So I'm going to uh, actually use a little bit of tooth decay really quickly. But I think this is important because, you know, he's all messed up and dirty and yet he's got these lovely white teeth. So, <laughs> so this is, uh, back in the day, this was um, tooth enamel. This was back when Max Factor Don't made uh, close your lip. Leave it tooth up. enamel. It was actually enamel paint. And they come in these lovely little things. They're great. They have a little shaker ball in them. You just shake them up to get the color going. You dry your artist's teeth off, please use a gloved hand so you're nice and sanitary and clean. So it's an alcohol base with rosin. So this is just a little bit of actually what's called decay. And you can just put it on and then kind of pick it off. And it's just going to give you some nastiness to the teeth. I should note, uh, if you want to use this on other people, go ahead and he needs to dry it. <laughs> That's going dry. Before he closes his mouth because it will rub off. It's easily removable with the toothbrush and some toothpaste later. Um, if you have used the brush directly out of the case like I just did on him, it's his. You don't want to be using it for other people, even though it's an alcohol base, right? And now I'm just going to put a little bit of the nicotine because that's probably more. So the nicotine is a little bit gray, yes? A little gray, yeah. Well, because of dealing with singers, I often will put down a layer of spare gum, tack it up, and then I'll put down another layer, wet. Sometimes I will take the mustache and just touch it to the wet glue, pull it up because that transfers some of the glue to the lace, go back in, mat it down. Also, the brush that comes in the bottle is not very good for applying gum. My dad said, don't be chintzy on the spirit gum. So, you know, like a number seven flat brush, maybe a 10. Yeah. I've often seen people take like a stocking and go, <laughs> and push it down and then you're picking all the hair out of the glue. If you use the teeth of a comb, you can actually go up through the hair and press the lace into place. And then I like to use the rib of the comb and then I can put down the little bits. Thank you.